Oh, fair story. Peggy Douglas, Aunt Mary's pretty niece, and a friend, Jane Plummer, who lived next door to the Lane Farm, had just left Dr. Lewis's office in Wakefield, where Jane had gone to have a routine checkup. Peggy had been waiting for Jane in the doctor's outer office when Kit Mead, Ben Calvert's daughter, had come in with a baby boy everyone believed to be her own. The sudden, unexpected meeting with the girl who had married Bill Mead had been a terrible shock because only a few minutes before, goaded by Jane's accusations, Peggy had admitted that her none-too-well-disguised indifference had been only a pretense that, in reality, she still loved Bill. The ensuing conversation with Kit, coming so closely upon that admission, had left Peggy with a feeling of utter despair. Because Kit had told Peggy that she and Bill were not getting a divorce. Had sneered at the paleness of Peggy's face, which followed this declaration. Now, as Jane and Peggy come into the late afternoon bustle of the little town. Peggy, you look as though you just been a ghost. What did Kit Mead have to say? I might know it was something nasty, even if I couldn't say it in your face. Oh, what's the use of repeating what you said, Jane? It, it'll only make it more real. All right, Peggy. If you don't want to. I just thought it might make you feel better. Help you to get rid of it. Nothing can ever do that. I just don't see how anyone could be so, so unspeakable. Kit Mead is capable of anything. She couldn't surprise me if I found her in the midst of cutting a person's throat. It's just about what she does anyway, in her own way. Oh, well, I ought to know better than to let anything she says bother me, but it's so hard when I think. I know. Darn it, I wish there was something I could do. Oh, but there isn't she. There's nothing anyone can do. Except me. Look, Jane, if you don't mind, I... I'm not going home with you. There, there's something I have to do. But Peggy, you... I can't explain now, Jane. You just go on back to the car. I'll see you tomorrow. But, but how do you get back home? Don't you want me to wait? No. No, really, Jane. Don't worry about me. I'll be perfectly all right. Okay, if that's what you want. And... and oh, Peggy, I'm, I'm terribly sorry you're so unhappy. Thank you. Well, call me tomorrow. Sure now. Yes, yes, I promise. Goodbye, Jane. Goodbye. Jane Plummer walked back to her car. She was worried, baffled by Peggy's odd behavior, which she realized must have been caused by something Kit Mead had said. What could it have been, Jane asked herself. She remembered a short while ago, before she and Peggy had gone to Dr. Lewis's office, how she'd urged Peggy to be honest with herself, to admit that she was still in love with Bill Mead wanted her to promise that she would not do anything to ruin three lives. Peggy's, Bill's, and Dorn's. Peggy was so dejected and said it didn't make any difference if she did love Bill because it was too late. Bill was married to Kit. Meanwhile, Peggy entered the lobby of the Brown Palace Hotel, went to the house phone in the corner, and made a call. A few minutes later, Nicholas Dorn appeared. Walked up to Peggy with a glad, welcoming smile. Peggy, this is certainly a nice surprise. Nick, what? Nick, I want to talk to you. You sound upset, darling. No, no, I'm not upset. Nick, let's get married right away. Right away? Yes, tonight. Please, Nick, I want to. Well, wait a minute, Peggy. I'm flattered and all that sort of thing, but what's the sudden rush? Don't tell me you've suddenly realized I'm indispensable to you. Don't joke, Nick. I'm very serious. Well, so am I, Peggy. There's something odd about your rushing in here out of the blue and wanting to plunge into matrimony as though you couldn't wait another minute. What's it all about? What goes on? Nothing. I've just decided there's no reason to postpone it. Oh, I've thought that all along. The point is, you haven't. Well, I do now. So, but, honey, even assuming it's a fine idea, and offhand I think it is, well, you know it takes a certain amount of time. Arrangements have to be made. Well, then how about this coming Monday? Well, Sounds wonderful to me, but how about your Aunt Mary and Lefty? Do they know about this? I'll tell Aunt Mary as soon as I get home, and you know Lefty, he'll be delighted. Yes, perhaps Lefty will. He's been rooting for our team all along, but uh, it's not going to be very cheery news for Aunt Mary. I can't help that, Nicholas. Mary and I have talked it over many times. She agrees that I have to do what I think is best. 
Even if she doesn't approve. Besides, it isn't if we hadn't been engaged. Well, well, where do you want to be married, Peggy? Little church you and Aunt Mary go to? Looks charming from the outside. Oh, I don't care where we're married. You don't care? Why, of course you care. No, it doesn't make any difference. I thought that sort of thing was always important to girls. Remember, young woman, this, so far as I'm concerned, is going to be your first and last wedding. Might as well go to town with it. Bridesmaids, flowers, wedding cake, the work. Those things don't mean much to me, because honestly, I just as soon go to a justice of the peace. Look, this is supposed to be a happy occasion. Why are you so grim about it? I'm not grim. It's just that, well, those things don't mean much to me. I see. Well, uh, where do we go for a honeymoon? I don't care. Not Niagara Falls, of course, but someplace nice. Might go to Chicago, stay at a hotel along the lake. Any place you say, Nicholas. Just let's get the whole thing over quickly. Get it over quickly? Peggy, you don't sound like an eager bride. You sound like it was something disagreeable. No, it's not that. It's... There's something behind this sudden impulse. I think I've a right to know what it is, Peggy. All right, Nicholas, there is something behind it. You remember what you told me a long time ago. That the only way I'd ever get myself out of this mess about Bill, the only way I could get over it would be to start a new life. Well, I've decided you were right. So I'd like to get married right away. Start building that new life we talked about. See? I saw Kit Mead this afternoon. Kit and Baby. It wasn't a very pleasant meeting. I can believe you if she's everything I've heard. She made some very nasty implications. But I was still running after Bill. That I still hope for... That witch. She ought to climb in her broomstick and fly away from here. Heaven help her if I ever run into her. Try to imply that I wanted Bill to get a divorce. And then she told me Bill isn't going to get a divorce. She and Bill are going to go on together. I hope you made it clear to her that you didn't give a hoot one way or the other. Well, Nick, I... I wanted to, but... That's just it. It wouldn't be true, Nick. Because it does matter to me. It matters a lot. Oh. You see, that's what I mean. I realize now that I should have followed your advice earlier, that we should be married already. As you said, that's the only way to, to settle things. Then what you mean is you are still in love with Bill. I don't know. But well, whatever the feeling is, I have to admit there's something there. I can talk to you about it, Nick, because our relationship is on a different basis. It always has been. Yes, it always has been. So, the sooner we get married, the better. In other words, Peggy, you want to be married to me in order to protect yourself from yourself. Yes. The same way you want to marry me in order to put an end to the, the Julie thing. But I forgot all about Julie long ago. I'm afraid you have no idea how completely I've forgotten her. Well, I'm glad for your sake. But it really doesn't matter much, does it? Well, Peggy, I'm certainly glad you explained this all to me. Well, of course I would, Nicholas. That was part of our pact, wasn't it? That we'd always be honest with each other. Sure. Let's always be honest with each other. Why do you say it like that so strangely? Well, you sort of knocked me for a loop today. Don't pay any attention to it. I'm sorry. I, I didn't think it would upset you. I thought you'd be glad. Yes, of course. It's all fine, Peggy. Wonderful. We're now sweet wedding bells. But, Nick, you sound so bitter somehow. No, Peggy, I, I'm not bitter. And you look so depressed, unhappy. Nicholas, what's the matter? Nothing, Peggy. Not a blessed thing. I'm getting just exactly what I asked for. Peggy studied Nicholas a moment. Started to say something, and then, thinking better of it, she rose to leave. She had no idea how Nicholas was feeling. For Nicholas Bowen was in the ironic position 
of being about to marry a girl he had originally wanted to marry, just because of the pleasant, companionable feeling he had for her. The girl he wanted to marry now because he was deeply in love with her. Could he live up to his side of the bargain, give her the sort of relationship she expected, impersonal, friendly, but unemotional? Should he back out now before it was too late? Or should he go ahead 